Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. So this is going to be the first video of a series of videos where I aspirationally walk you through the conversion of a 1980 Volkswagen pickup truck or caddy, as they're also known as, from a 1.5 liter diesel to uh, electric. Now I've had this caddy for know, over a year now, and I've had it on the road maybe four months, but it's given me nothing but trouble. I put a new cylinder head on it, uh, but and while I had the cylinder head off, I discovered that all the cylinder walls are scored pretty badly. Um, but it didn't didn't really seem to affect the driving of it. It's slow as molasses, but I think you know that's what you get with from the factory. These had 50 horsepower, so that's what you get with a 50 horsepower engine, and this certainly isn't factory. Is definitely down on compression. Anyway, the biggest problem that I had is my fuel tank. Uh, when I was getting this thing back on the road, I had the fuel tank down and I looked inside of it and it was all rusted and just, just rust everywhere. And a new one is 350 bucks and I could get a guy in town to clean this one for a hundred bucks. So I went with the hundred dollar option. In hindsight, I should have gone with the $350 option because, uh, he didn't get it all cleaned out completely. And there was I'm, I, I'm guessing just flakes of rust all over the top, or it, all over the inside of the thing. And uh, as you're driving along, the fuel's sloshing around and it's loosening up all that rust. The rust ends up in the fuel lines and the fuel filter gets clogged up and then the engine pulls a vacuum on the fuel line and it just gets air in it and it doesn't run. And it's just a disaster. And it's been nothing but a disaster nonstop. In fact, in fact, if you look in there, right there, you can see that's you know, that's flakes of crap that was in the fuel tank. So, uh, I'm over it. I've, I've had to get this thing towed three times. I actually got it towed at my expense one time. And then the other two times was using my own trailer. And I've always had to call friends to get rides and I'm not down with that. So we're going to make this thing electric. If you look at my other videos on this channel, on my page, you'll see this Jeep. I have made this Jeep electric about two years ago using Tesla parts. I use the Tesla drive unit, I use the Tesla battery, and um, yeah, I've been driving this thing for a while now, but I think the the reality is, is I'm just not a Jeep guy. There are a lot of compromises that you have to put up with when you own a Jeep, and uh, man, it's like a lifestyle, and that's just not my lifestyle. They're, they're impossible, they're, they're really impractical. Um, the back of that thing is sort of full with batteries, and then I put a subwoofer box in it. So any storage space that there could possibly be is filled up with batteries in a subwoofer box. But even if even if I had that space, I've got a soft top on this thing, and you can't access that space. The best you can do is um, open the tailgate, and then you can only get to the bottom half. So you can't put anything particularly big in it. Uh, being a Jeep, it's tall, and it has a, a you know an imposing frontal area and a lot of ground clearance and big tires, a lot of rolling resistance. It's all-wheel drive, four, full-time four-wheel drive. A lot of rolling resistance, just terrible aerodynamics. It's basically the worst possible donor vehicle you could ever want if you wanted to make an electric car. This is, Jeeps are the worst. I really don't think you can get much worse. I think uh, from the factory, if this would have had the four-cylinder in it, it would have got 15 miles per gallon, 16 miles a gallon. The four-liter is you know, the straight six is not much different. Um, they're just terrible. Like if you go to U-Haul, if you get a, a 16 foot U-Haul truck, truck, they get the same fuel mileage. That's what we're dealing with here. It's just outrageous. So I don't know. It's just not my thing. Um, the, the way the motor isn't, well, let's see if we can kind of show you it, but the motor is sort of in here sideways in cattywampus. And, uh, it's actually, rotated 90 degrees from how it would have been in the car so we got one drive shaft coming out of the drive unit going to the back one coming out going to the front now normally that would be one drive shaft going to the left rear tire and the other going to the right rear tire but like i said i turned it around 90 degrees and there's some pretty wacky drive line angles particularly to the back because the back differential is centered but the output of the drive unit is offset to the driver's side. So, and then it's also tall, it's also higher. So you get pinion angle, it, it vibrates, <laughs> it vibrates. That's all there is to it. And then 
Uh, I'm also using the factory Dana 30, 35 differentials, which are notoriously weak. But since I'm running higher than what you would normally run gearing, uh, you get a lot more tooth contact. So I think that has saved me and the fact that I'm all wheel drive all the time. So any torque that comes out of the drive unit gets evenly split to the front and the back. So uh, no differentials really overloaded. But anyway, it's, you know, it drives well enough, I guess, but it's just not my thing. So I'm going to take this thing down, take it apart. Once I get the batteries out of it and the charger and the DC, well, not the DC, DC. Once I get some parts out of it, I'm going to be pulling the drive unit out of this thing and putting it on some groups somewhere. So if somebody wants to recreate this or put it in a Bronco or in a, a K10 or, you know, anything really, you could put this in any four wheel drive, anything. Preferably if it has an offset rear differential. A lot of guys over in Europe uh, do Land Rover conversions in Europe. And their differentials are offset to the right side. It would be their driver side, uh, our passenger side. But both the front and the back are offset. So they'll put the drive unit in 180 of the way that I have it. But they have really straight drive drive shaft angles. So they don't run into the same problems. And, uh, you know, the bumpers be for sale. The side bumpers. Are, I got a rear bumper and all that stuff. So anyway, so yeah. So the little Volkswagen is going to be going to be converted into electric. Now, since I'm taking a lot of the parts from the Jeep, I've been doing this whole electric conversion thing for quite some time. And this motor right here is potentially what's going to go in it if it'll fit. This motor was in a 1993 Ford Ranger that I had converted about eight years ago, seven years ago. And I drove it as my daily driver for about five years. Just a fantastic truck. Uh, it was you know, as good as gasoline, but as electric, it was just so good. Um, quiet, powerful. I had a range of about 100 miles from a not terribly big battery. From a battery about a third the size of what's in the Jeep. The Jeep gets 120 miles. The Ranger got 100 miles with the battery a third the size of it. So that, that tells you not only how good the Jeep, how good the Ranger was, but how bad the Jeep is. I expect with that same capacity of a battery in the Volkswagen, I'm going to get 150 maybe even 175 uh, and if i drive really careful you know keep it under 55 may even get close to 200 miles i don't know just because how it, how light it is problem with this motor is going to be it's physically rather large i did some preliminary measuring from the left side motor face to the back side of it and it from what i can tell it's about the same length as the the diesel that's in the car right now so it may not even fit not without some modification to the, the passenger side shock tower. I don't want to modify shock towers. I'm not above modifying cars, but I don't want to modify shock towers. I don't have to. Fortunately, there are a number of other um, options for this. And I can get a... Uh, this, is, this is from a company called High Performance Electric Vehicle Systems, HPEVS. This is an AC76. They've also got an AC... 50 and ac 35 and an ac 20 an ac 20 is actually what i've got my little tractor here you can see my other videos my other channel for that and you can see this thing is you know only about 11 or 12 inches long and it weighs like 50 pounds this one is about 18 inches long 17 inches long and it weighs 176 pounds there's a lot of copper in there now the ac 35 is slightly larger than the one that's in the tractor that i just showed you and it weighs over a hundred pounds less than this, and it's not. It doesn't have that much less power, peak power. It has less continuous power, but it doesn't have less peak power. Now, motor horsepower ratings are kind of weird. This big one is only rated at 15 horsepower continuous, but I challenge you to next time you're on the highway, 60, 65, whatever, look at your RPMs, and they're probably going to be around 1500 to 2000. And then go on the internet and find a power graph of the engine that's in your car and see just exactly how much power it's putting out at 1500 RPM. And you're going to be pretty surprised by how little it does put out. Engines are always rated at 350 horsepower or whatever, but that's at a very specific uh, RPM range. Um, not even really range, but with an RPM that you get that. And it's very rare that you'll ever drive at that 
RPM. Uh, just daily driving, you're not using very much power at all. So that's how motor, that's how all these electric motors can be. Uh, so um, the ra their ratings are small. Their rating, uh, their horsepower ratings are, are low, but they have a tremendous amount of power um, because you just don't use that much power when you're driving these things. And this has a peak power of about a, not quite a hundred, maybe 90 horsepower. And, um, that actually equates to maybe 180 or even 200 of engine horsepower, just because when I say that, I mean that in like a seat of the pants feeling, like if you put it on a dyno, it is what it is, but the way that a motor delivers torque feels different than the way an engine delivers torque. And if you've ever driven or ridden in an electric car, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So anyway, that is, uh, this is introduction video to the electric Volkswagen. My Jeep was called Tesla TJ, T-S-L-A. That's the Dow, Dow Jones, or that's the, um, ticker for the stock market, T-S-L-A, TJ. Uh, I named it that because not only is, does it have a whole bunch of Tesla parts in it, but I sold a whole bunch of Tesla stock so that I can pay for all the parts that are in it because converting cars is painfully expensive. Uh, it's not a good way to save money. It's a way to, for my, for my purposes, it, uh, I don't like oil companies. We're not going to go there, but it's me giving the big old F you to oil companies. That's what it is. And, uh, without getting too political, the big old F you to foreign wars as well which are generally speaking in support of energy security and oil, but I digress. So that is it. So I think I'm going to call this one TSLA VW. So this will be Tesla VW because all the parts that are in the Jeep are going to go into this. And what's going to happen is that Jeep has 16 Tesla modules. And I can't, I can't, I probably can't fit in here all 16 of them. And I don't really want to, that's a thousand pounds worth of battery in a car that, you know, weighs less than 2,000 pounds, so that's kind of silly. And that motor doesn't need that much voltage. The Jeep is 400 volts. That motor I just showed you only needs about 144, 160, something like that. So each of those modules are 25, so if I use six of them, that would give me uh, 150 volts, and that'd be more than enough for that motor, and I could put six of them in here quite easily. Uh, once that motor's in here, the, the height of this will be gone. You can essentially think of it without the cylinder head in there. So there'll be tons of room in here where I might be able to stack two of those modules. And then where the fuel tank is now, there's actually a, a pretty large cavity uh, underneath of here, underneath this whole area right here. It's got a pretty big area. So I'll be able to put, if not all, if not four extra, maybe possibly all six if I need to. Uh, I want to put one underneath the hood just, you know, cause it looks cool. But if I need to, I'll put all six under there. That's fine too. It'll give me a better weight distribution. And then what I can also do is take six more of those, set them aside, put them in a, a separate um, box or something that I could lift up in here with a, a front end loader um, or possibly make a trailer with those on it and then just have a plug. And if I need to go more than however far this goes on six modules, I can put that trailer uh, on the back of it or put the that box in the back of it and go that longer range. So... That is, uh, that's the plan, and this is probably going to take, a, it might not take too long that Jeep took over, took about a year and a half. I don't expect this is going to take that long. Uh, it's a lot simpler, it's going to be a lot simpler build. The vehicle itself is a lot simpler. The wiring in it, the existing wiring is very simple. The Jeep had fuel injection and all kind of crap that I had to get rid of. This doesn't have anything. So all I'm going to need to do is tap into the engine wiring harness and find a hot at all times and a key on and the 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 wire here this is for the injection pump uh solenoid so that'll be my key on that's a you know that's easy right there and then the um uh let's see one of these wires over here i used for a fuel pump this is hot at all times right there so i've already got i've already got my don't want that touch i've already got the two wires that i need and um yeah, so I've got, that's, really, that's the only two wires that I need, and then that'll just tie into the, um, the electric motor wiring harness, which itself isn't all that difficult. I'll have to mount a throttle, uh, well, no, I can use the existing throttle, and then just take this here, take this, and put it on an electronic, sort of like a potentiometer, and that'll be my throttle, 
that's it. Uh, if I can use this motor, then it'll have enough torque that I'll never have to shift gears. I can probably just put this in this transmission in second gear and leave it there forever. And that'll be good from zero miles an hour up to at least 70. And then reverse will just be a switch. You just flip a switch for reverse. I'll take the display. I've got a display in the Jeep that shows state of charge and battery voltages and all that stuff. Take that out of there. Um, I may or may not use a, a battery. I didn't have one in the Ranger. The only reason I have one in the Jeep is because I have a winch. But one of the problems I found with the the Ranger not having a battery is if I was in a parking lot parked next to somebody whose 12 volt battery was dead, here I am with a gigantic battery but not able to help them jump start their car because the uh, DC DC converter is essentially your alternator. DC DC converter isn't doesn't put out as much power as a as a battery. It just puts out enough power to run your systems like your lights and your radio and your stereo and all that stuff. So. I may end up putting a battery in it, or not, I don't know. I want to keep this really simple. Uh, this is a brand new radiator that I had to put in this thing, but, and I can use it. The batteries technically need some kind of cooling, and the controller, the it's called an inverter. It takes direct current from the battery, and it uh, converts that into three-phase alternating current for the motor. That does produce some heat, and it has a, a cooling system associated with it. So I'll use the radiator for that. And um, yep, that's all I can think of for now. Uh, stay tuned. Keep on watching. This is going to be kind of fun. So uh, I'll see you next time.